Hello. Welcome back to Leading Our Own Way. I've just got off on an amazing interview with this beautiful person right here next to me, Miss Renee Marie. Our episode consists of many, many different topics ranging from childhood abuse to joining the military and going through a horrific time in the military. She once looked at the badge of honor, the uniform with honor, and um, but her journey was tainted. This episode is pretty much running from talking about the battlefield to the runway. She's modeled, as you can see in this picture, and uh, we will show you in the episode as well. And um, to being this incredible person who's now guiding other people. Um, in the pre-chat, we discuss some of the psychic talents and I don't know if that's the right word to use, but ty um, psychic powers that she has. And I asked her to do something. And um, it becomes very clear. So make sure you stay tuned because we're going to delve. We're going to do a two part to this. We're going to meet next week, and next week's episode will all be a live reading. I tell you that now because she absolutely, absolutely, I'm speechless as you can probably tell. But she nailed two names close to my mum, and there's just no way. Stay tuned. Stay focused. Stay locked in. But today's episode is all about. Renee's journey into what she's doing today. She suppressed a lot of feelings her whole life. She's had these feelings and these powers and these acknowledgements since a young child, but just doesn't trust us. Didn't trust herself. Not until really my conversation did she trust herself regarding some of these feelings that come and these thoughts and these visions that come to her. But my word, she should definitely, definitely trust herself, and that's why we're going to be vulnerable again. She's going to be vulnerable and she's, I'm a bit nervous, but she's going to do a reading next week. But today it's all about her journey and um, filling in those gaps of what the person you see to her, see in this episode. She's absolutely stunning. She's beautiful, so vulnerable and uh, so open. And uh, I, I, I'm, it's just a beautiful conversation. So stay here with us and stay tuned and uh, we'll be right back. Welcome to Leading Our Own Way. I'm your host, Andrew White, and this is the podcast that unveils captivating narratives of resilience and personal triumph. This podcast is for anyone seeking inspiration and insights on overcoming life's challenges. Follow and subscribe, and then we can lead together forever. Today, I'm going to welcome Renee Marie to the podcast. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Andrew? I've got Prince Henry here I as well. I was about to bring in Prince Henry. You beat me to it. Amazing. Um, the second pet we've had on Leading Our Own Way, I've had a cat walk in front of us a few times on a previous guest. <laughs> well, it's not It's not going to be an episode with without Prince Henry. He usually wants to steal the show. <laughs> That's all right. You know what? What I've learned through the algorithm, put pets on and it just brings I, in floods you know, of people. I'm going to get him dancing and um, we'll lead in with him. We'll hook in with him. <laughs> Love it. Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for joining me on my journey and leading our own way. It's very special and amazing to have you here. And um, we've just done our first live together as a pre-recording before we started the podcast. Yeah, and I had um, my emergency evacuation alarm go off as a test too. So I'm glad we got that out of the way on the live instead of the podcast. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Well, that live that live was obviously on Instagram, and by the time people get to see this, that would have been like two or three months ago. Yeah, September. <laughs> <laughs> September, yeah, twenty third to be exact. The day before um, birthday. Oh, say that again. Sorry, my mum's birthday's tomorrow. So, oh yes, you did. Yeah, you did say that actually the other week that we couldn't film today because it's your mum's birthday. Are you doing something special? Yeah, I'm going to go to Newcastle here in Sydney and go see her in Newcastle. Take her out for dinner. Nice. Yeah. Very, very nice. Yeah. Very special indeed. Mm -hmm. Um. So yes, we met through my me connecting you to you because your story kind of came out somehow on my social media and I had to make connections. I'm so glad we did because we did a pre-chat and that pre-chat lasts for three hours. Um, if we're going to sum up that three-hour pre-chat, so people who are just tuning in, if so, if you could give this ca the categories to cover the, I suppose, the moral of our your journey, which will be our episode, what words could you put in? it into yeah. for to keep people here sucked in to go i need to know what's going on in this in this story for renee yeah well basically i like to say my story is from the battlefield to the to the runway um from military boots to high heels 
<laughs> I used to be in the military, so talking about my journey as a very feminine woman in a toxic male dominated culture. I was one of the first females ever in a combat role. So, um, and how I transitioned into spirituality and personal development and awakened my psychic gifts and how um, I discovered that they were there in childhood, but through certain things, I learned to suppress them and forget about my gifts. And so that's what we'll, we'll be discussing today. Yeah. Amazing. And, 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 you know, I will, I will plug it now with the spiritual, uh, the spiritual side and the psychic um, skills and powers. I don't know what the right terminology is to use in that regard, but we did a bit of a um, accidental thing on the pre-chat, which got me hooked and you did something amazing. And I will explain that at the beginning of next week's episode, because what we're going to do is film in October, which will be published the week after this episode. Uh, we're going to do a live reading, aren't we? Yep. Yep. So you're going to be on the spot. We're going to channel in, see what messages come through, what spirits. Yeah, that's amazing. And and I, I've never really done one before. I'm aware of a, a people close to me have done one and they've seemed that they've been touched by it. But you hooked me in you got me because i will tell people the full story next week but what renee did was mention two names that are close to my mum and um i just dropped dinner my oh. i just dropped my yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the floor <laughs> i just wished i'd recorded that i just and you know I, yeah i've got no words i'm speechless when it comes to it uh, but what renee did to me that day was um say two names and uh, there's just no way anybody could mention those two names you know because we bring up people bring up you know death and the chances of you know i don't, i predicting you know cancer for example and cancer's the second biggest killer i'm like okay yeah you got that right not you and just in general mm. but you could not have got these two names just could not have got it mm -hmm. So there'll be aspects of the read, and I'm sure people will be able to depict and go, oh, yeah, there's a chance we could get around that. But what Renee did was pick two names. And these two names are very old fashioned. Anyway, we'll go on to it more next week because this is about you today. Um, so let's get back to it. Um, if I was going to ask you how you are leading your own way today, mm -hmm. how would that I'd be? Say, I'd say with magic. I'd say with magic, you know, in this world, um, we're so programmed to be logical and just here yeah. and we forget about the magic in our lives. And so that's something I'm doing now. It's leading with magic in every moment, connecting to my heart, opening my heart chakra and finding the blessings in everything and following the legends of my heart. Yeah. We'll dive do a little bit deeper of what you're doing professionally, mentally, physically, and emotionally in a moment. But it's it's interesting you bring up the logic. Um, do you think we're going back towards more of the emotional side as a society now? Do you think, or do you think we're still very logic? I feel, you know, because there is everyone has a different experience. There's a world, but everyone sees the world so differently. So some people see that yes, we absolutely are heading in the direction of more emotional and spiritual, and especially if you're tapped into that. So yes, I would agree mm. with that. Though on the flip side, there are people that have a different lived experience and they still see it as very logical. Um, but if we look at technology, it's been able to, I mean, we live in a dualistic reality, so there's positive and negative always. Everything gets amplified um, now with technology, but I definitely think we are leading into more awakening, consciousness, spirituality, like, that's all I ever see, but that's because I'm so tapped in and the way RAS, my reticular activating system is so connected to that. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. You know, I do a lot of reading around uh, the brain and um, food and, you know, the, the, the sleep and the, the history of our ancestors to see how we coped as a, for millions of years before we started really on the last 200 years, we started to really create these new technologies and, you know, electricity and, 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 fake food and so on. But where I think logic came from, we never used to have the prefrontal cortex for millions of years. We just had the limbic system. And but because we started to eat meat, and again, I'm 
something I've read, I've, been, I've read on many different authors, but because we started to eat the food on the ground opposed from the trees, um, we get we got more calories in the system. So when we got more calories, our brains got bigger. So the skulls got bigger. And over th- obviously hundreds of thousand years, it would have been a very slow process through the generations. But the prefrontal cortex was uh, developed through the new type of calories that were uh, humans, you know, mm-hmm. ate, I suppose. And so obviously the body evolved. But we used to base our survival purely off the eight, nine survival emotions that the they are. Um, mm-hmm. And then we logic started to come in. But we, when we used to survive in nature, we didn't survive off being logic. It was pure emotional. Yeah. Um, and I suppose that's where when business comes in, we, and the data and the numbers and paper and writing and so on, um, logic seems to come into mind. But the, I feel like in the business world, maybe because I am tapped it to it, so I choose to look at that, the emotional side is slowly coming back into it in terms of well-being because everyone's talking about well-being right now Mm -hmm. so emotional side has to come back more right I don't know what do you think yeah definitely well I also see it as like the feminine and masculine energies that um you know we all have those poles those essences inside of us and some people are so far on the masculine where it's just action it's the logic it's the numbers and then the feminine is about the spirituality the surrender um receiving and so about I really believe when you can bring that into balance, like that's where you can excel. Um, But I am very much in my, in the feminine surrender world. So I see it everywhere and I'm like, Oh, everyone's conscious and (laughs) everyone's tapped in. Yeah. So what do you do uh, professionally now then talk to us about how you're leading your way in, in terms of what you do every day. So what I do now is I work with spiritual coaches, healers, mystics, and now psychics too, to activate their magic and turn their gifts into gold. So helping them with their business, helping them tap into their gifts, tap into their wisdom, their expertise, and build a business online. Um, So, and I'm so passionate about that. I've been doing this now for over four years now and constantly talking about manifestation and mindset and the energetics. And, uh, and I also do modeling. So doing modeling and going to be getting into acting very soon too. Yeah. Nice. We'll touch on that in a moment, but just a couple of lead up questions before that. Um, if I was to follow you on a daily basis in your workplace, um, what are the type of scenarios? I mean, obviously you don't talk about the people and the business and so on, but just generally speaking, what would be some of the clients type of clients that you meet? Um, and and what would you do to them Mm -hmm. or with them? Sorry. So I, the people that come into my world are some are the ones that, and I work with a lot of female or, or feminine presenting. Uh, that's what's just naturally came into my into my world, and they come to me and they're either they know that there's something deeper within, or like they have this yearning or they have this desire and they have this calling. They know they're here for something bigger, but they don't know how to conceptualize that or how to bring that together. Or maybe they feel a little bit um, like they don't belong, and they're looking for for some deeper meaning, something that they can connect themselves to. And they might be either at rock bottom or they might be dabbling in spirituality, personal development, business, but they don't fully know how to actualize their manifestations and how to be an embodiment of the work. And um, they're looking for that guide and looking for that mentor. And that's when they come into my world. And I talk a lot about mindset and manifestation and your energy field and your chakras um, connecting to the divine. And that's something that um, for me now, like that's what's been able to, I feel like pop the lid off to my psychic abilities because I've been really focusing on cleaning the vessel and um, and setting the intention and, and building that belief in self and in the unseen. And so when they start working with me, then we look at what are their desires? What is it that they want to achieve? What do they want to call in? What do they want to bring in? And anything they can visualize or see or feel because everyone has a different way of, of seeing or feeling their, their visions. I'm very visual, so I see visions. And we get so specific on that. And we have a look at what's stopping you. What are the limitations? Because I believe that this is a limitless reality. Yet as human beings, we put limits on ourselves. And so it's all about taking off the lid, looking at the conditioning, 
looking at what's got them to form their beliefs, their thoughts about themselves, their beliefs about themselves, about the world, about their business. And, um, and then we start clearing that out. And once we open that up, they're a clear channel to their purpose, like illuminate their divine path, what they're here to do. And that will keep evolving the more that they evolve. And then, um, we bring that into the business, how to reclaim their voice, how to express themselves on the social, on social media, get clear on who it is that they can help, how to turn their gifts into signature packages, programs so that they can guide, uh, their clients through a transformation. Like, um, I believe that instead of just giving their sessions like once off, it's about creating a transformation for a client because same with the gym, you're not going to go to the gym once and you're going to be really strong. You want to be, uh, their repetition showing up and that becomes your identity and, and that becomes who you are. And so that's what I teach them too, so that they can help people get a transformation and, and achieve an outcome. And that's what I do with them. So it's really, it's really beautiful and powerful watching their, just someone reclaim their power and believe in themselves and know what's possible and then see their results come through and them living their dream. Yeah. So it's, I suppose it stems back to, um, uh, always leading with purpose, right? Mm -hmm. I guess. And, and, it, and I don't mean necessarily as a leader, as a boss to inspire, well, I do, but to inspire those that they are leading, whether it's in their business or the people around them, but to lead with purpose to, for themselves first. Mm -hmm. There's so many leaders out there that, you know, they're, they're in it for the wrong reasons, whether it's about themselves, the easy, e e ticking the boxes for their leaders, their bosses, should I say. And it's the, we forget the people we're supposed to lead with purpose. And I always, when I talk about leadership in that respect, hence why I wrote my book, How to Lead with Purpose, it was more about understanding the self at a deep human level. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't lead yourself with purpose, how can you lead with anybody else with purpose? Sure. So if anyone was watching this then, and was thinking about getting in touch with you, but was nervous, didn't know what to do, didn't even know what to think. Um, and they're in that messy middle, as you mentioned. So I'm summing up a lot of what you just said about, I suppose it goes into the messy middle. What would be the first, I mean, we're not, we can't obviously go through the whole program, but what would be the first day, what would the first day look like okay. to you and, and to, the, to your client? Well, the first step, so them coming in. So, um. Well, if, and just to um, add in there as well, like if they're thinking about taking that step or if they haven't taken that step, I have created a, a masterclass called the Creatrix Masterclass. And that gives a real taster into um, my work because I really focus a lot on the, the consciousness aspect and the identity aspect because strategy is a smaller portion compared to mindset mm -hmm. and psychology. It's important, but it's smaller compared to who you are. And um, that masterclass is just over 90 minutes. And that's where we go through a deep activation of getting so clear on what it is that you want. And that really translates into when someone comes into my world and my program's called Enchanted Legacy because you're weaving enchantment and you're leaving your legacy and, and um, you're owning who you are and, and your gifts and sharing that with the world. And um that's one of the very first things we do is, okay, let's reclaim these desires. What is it that you want? What's coming up for you? And we, so we go through a deep session of getting clear on that vision, what that looks like for the business. And then we start breaking it down into more of the specifics. So I go very high level vision, let's dream big. And I believe that if your dreams and your goals don't scare you as well as excite you, they're not big enough. And so we, we just bust through those limitations and think about what's possible and then we start yeah. to bring that back down into the plan it's like okay now we've got this what's the immediate thing that we can what we can do so then i go through um getting clear on their mission their purpose their vision statement their values so that they live by this and so everything leads from this space like their why and that's why i really loved what you said with a lot of some there are some leaders that don't lead with purpose and we can't forget that there's a human being on the other side listening to us absorbing our content um investing in us and coming into our world and you especially if you want to lead with purpose like leading with your heart it's there's a responsibility to that too and so we 
that's one of the things we get clear on because so many people get stuck on the strategy aspect of all oh, the bells and whistles. I've got to have this or what content do I put out? But if you're connected to your purpose, you're connected to your why, all of that is just white noise and it can come together and you feel more confident and like challenges are inevitable and they're going to come up. And when you're connected to that deeper purpose, then you can bust through those. And so that's the very first thing that we do. And we call in the higher self, um, work out who is it that they need to be. Like if we think about their vision and, and where they're at in their their business, that they've achieved everything. It's like, who is that person? Who is that version of you? Because to create that life, it's going to take another level of yourself. It's going to take uh another version of yourself digging deeper awakening new traits and dissolving the old self and letting go of what's not going to come on that path like a bit of an ego death and so once we get clear on that then we think about the daily embodiment what's the plan so every day to embody this and it's falling in love with the journey not getting so fixated on the destination not putting your worth in in your achievements which has been a struggle for me my whole life um very common theme and that was a big shift for me to to turn that and that's why I love to lead my clients through that too because then you fall in love with the process you fall in love with the journey and then the results of the clients the money the impact is a byproduct of who you'll be and what you're sharing so that looks that's basically day one more so week one more so week yeah one. <laughs> yeah so you must have a lot of people coming to you that just lack belief in themselves yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah absolute common theme they they um don't fully believe in themselves and don't fully believe in their gifts or their ability to help lead a client through a transformation or like even though their their world states otherwise even though they've got evidence of people coming to them that um always confide in them they tell them their life story they always seek their advice they always feel energetically uplifted. And so all around them, they're constantly being shown that you're here to heal, to coach, to mentor, to share, to express, to shine your light. And it's about them really coming in and, and owning that. And maybe a, like a big common theme that I've seen within my clients is throughout their childhood, their power was taken away or they gave the power away. And it's about reclaiming that power back. And it's very much a projection of, of me because, I mean, that that was the theme in, in my childhood too. So it's interesting how yeah. your clients mirror your journey and, and aspects of you yeah. too. And, and that's what I believe. You can't take a client any deeper than what you've gone to in yourself, the depth you've yeah. gone to in yourself. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, you, you nail a couple of points that refer to me and, you know, my journey is, you know, with particular leading our own way, the podcast, you know, I think a lot of people go, yeah, obviously I won't mention names, uh, but generally think it, I don't even know how to say it, but, you know, I think people think I'm doing this for the money mm. and I'm just doing it for the pure journey of it. Mm. I get to meet amazing people. I get to learn. I get to talk, I get to connect, which I've always kind of been squashed for is being a talker. You know, people don't answer my calls because they think they're going to be on the phone for a long time, <laughs> which I laugh about. But, you know, I just say I'm, I'm going to be busy in a minute. I'm cool. I'm a big boy. I can take it. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, I don't want to squash that and suppress it. I mean, I know we're going to talk about you suppressing some of your stuff, and I feel like I have suppressed it, especially moving to Australia. I've suppressed my personality because of my level of connection. But I think my level of connection is probably normal baseline human. I think the rest of us has gone down because of what you mentioned before. Baseline's lowered because of technology, because because we don't need the art of connection anymore because we can just do it on our phones but people don't understand the physiological um, aspects of uh, that's detrimental to the human life form, I suppose. Um, so I feel like with this podcast, and I'm bringing this up because you do have that spiritual side and we've discussed that, but I, I'm not, if I was doing it for the money, 20 weeks, 26 weeks in of publishing and I've not earned a dime from it, mm. Um, I, I think any normal person probably who didn't understand their purpose would have died out by now. So my question to you is, is my purpose, does it appear to you crystal clear? Absolutely. Absolutely. You have a, you that. have a book there and the way that you do this from the kindness of your heart and to, 
to bring people's stories together like and that's that's what's going to make it successful and that's what it's going to it's going to make it grow and what i feel too and this is something i tell my clients will share is what is the thing you're doing for free or what would you do for free if like we take money out of the equation what do you love what what lights you up what makes you passionate and if you're doing it for free then you know how can you turn this into your vocation like your your business and stuff so and that's something that i saw with you in in the visions is that door opening and and big things for you too because you're leading with purpose and and you're doing something for the love of it what what was that vision that you saw then because i we've not brought that up actually so very quickly because it's not about that but what is the vision that you saw in regards to that so people can get an insight to what we will do. Absolutely. So the first vision I got was this door opening, new doors, and and that always represents like a new opportunity and a new um a journey that you're going to walk on. And I see you very much the book, like the the book, um being front and center and and moving more into speaking and and out of teaching because you're in primary teaching at the moment. And so I see you more so teaching in other ways. It's like you gravitated to that industry, like primary teaching for example school and, and stuff because it's like there's that deeper purpose but that might not be the vehicle and so I see I see that for you as speaking and I mean that's your genius is being with people connection and so I see you taking this a lot further and I feel like some people think the podcast is maybe the stepping stone to that which I'm okay with it being it but I also want this the podcast to be a like it as well i want i want to do this more i want to travel and meet people so i can do these interviews live yeah, exactly. that's kind of my manifestation to it so i don't mind doing the other things around it but i don't want this to be the stepping stone i want actually this to be part a massive percentage of whatever it is that i end up doing you know what i mean it will, it will. I, I hope so i really do um are you clear are you happy in life mm -hmm. yeah i for me when I activate my psychic channel, I have always like the path that I've been on in, in this, in this industry and in spirituality, like I could never sway from it. Like, and I'm really grateful that at such a young age of 19 or actually really 18, that I started coming into this industry and I couldn't imagine not being in this. And mm. I, one of my biggest shifts was learning about everything is in the present moment and knowing, having a vision and, and having your goals and, and being on path. If you have this belief that your success is in an inevitable, which I have, and that everything is always happening for me and everything is always happening for the unfolding of my desires and my highest good, it's really helped me move from being putting everything in the destination and the outcome to living in the present and the now and taking the blessing and stopping and smelling the roses and now also with that question like are you happy i as humans like we're here our purpose is to experience the full spectrum of emotions and so happiness is an emotion that you can feel in in moments um and that baseline I feel that I live at is gratitude. Like I'm grateful. And there's moments yeah. where I have sad, there's moments where I have sadness. Um, of course. And there's, there's those moments and they, they come in and they, they have wisdom. They bring wisdom with them. And so I feel like the best answer to that question is I feel like I'm on path. Like I'm on the right path. Yeah. Like I'm on my journey and, um, it's only going to get better and better and better from here. Like that's my fundamental belief is like it gets better. It keeps getting better. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm going to dismantle the word happiness a little bit because everything that I've read and studied and I suppose elements of belief too and understanding, you know, our neurotransmitters and our hormones at probably a deeper level than I ever used to. I, th I feel like happiness is, is, is long-term and society is substitute happiness for pleasure. So we get small hits of that dopamine and um, happiness would be the serotonin coming out of your body, which isn't addictive. Um, you, you, you know, you can never get too much serotonin, whereas you get too much dopamine, that does become addictive, doesn't it? Um, and I think there's three parts to being happy is, you know, understanding satisfaction, enjoyment, and, uh, having that level of um as opposed purpose 
um, because I, it, I'm happy. But if you were to upset me now and say something mean to me, I might get sad, but it doesn't still dis take away my state of happiness. Uh, and I suppose that higher level of re regime, if that's the right word, like you use the word pretty well. I, I'm, I'm still getting used to your terminology, but um, that higher level of state, I think I'm generally quite happy, but my kid's going to annoy me. Mm. So I might get angry. So angry would be the emotion because I'll come out of that. But the opposite of happiness, obviously, is depression. Now, I can't be depressed for a day. Depression is long term. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? That's how I kind of look at it, I suppose. I'm not saying everybody should or will as well, but that's, I suppose, how I yeah. interpret and it. And I see it you know? too is like it's identity. It's like the way you see yourself. What do you believe about yourself? And so when the emotions come up, you can essentially not identify with them. And instead of saying, I am sad, I am happy, because that's I am is like a statement of claiming it. It's I'm feeling, you know, I'm mm. feeling this. And so when it's the true. sadness comes up, a lot of what we do as humans is we attach meaning to it. I'm feeling sad again, or I'm, um, I, I went from happy to now sad. I'm at this place. And then, oh, it must be because of this. It must be because of what happened here back there. And so we attach meaning to try and, um, clarify in our mind why we're feeling that when it's like I know who I am I know where I'm going I believe this about myself this is a moment in time that I'm feeling this it's here to teach me it's here to give me some wisdom and I know it's it's temporary like it's not forever mm. and it this too shall pass and I can just keep going on my journey and like having that trust and so when the emotions come up you by having that strong identity and strong purpose like those emotions will come up, but they don't take you off path. Or they might kind of take you a little bit off path, but you'll get back on. Yeah. Yeah. If everything's aligned, it, it will, won't it? You will come back on that path. What do you do? Is there anything that you do, anyone that is struggling on a daily basis, is there anything that you do on a on a daily basis to to be clear? Is there a, it's Because it's a constant journey, right? It, for me, it is. I've dipped slightly because I'm spending too much not too much time. I'm spending a lot of time doing this, you know, filming late, which means I don't do my morning routine necessarily um, as well as I used to. Um, but again, I'm very conscious of it. So I will align. I know I will because I've done it before. Um, what do you do to set yourself up every day to be clear? Is a, is a particular strategy that you do? Yeah, I have, um, I have my morning routine, which is sitting in stillness and connecting to the divine. I used to like one of my favorite books was Miracle Morning and I used to be like so crazy on my morning routines. I got to get this done. I got to get this done. I got to get this done. And I wasn't really, I was missing the purpose of a morning routine and seeing it as another thing I had to tick off my to-do list. Um, and, oh, this is another thing I have to do to be able to achieve this certain goal. And when I shifted my mindset about what a morning routine is, and it's about doing it because you want to and, and setting your frequency to the state that you can lead from that person and, and you're living your life by design rather than default, that's when everything changed for me. So when I, sometimes when life, life happens and I miss my routine, it's like, okay, I didn't get to do this thing in the morning. That's fine. It doesn't mean anything about me. I will do it some, mm. at some point in the day. And for me, it's just about sitting in still stillness, connecting to the divine, visualizing myself in where I want to be like that next level for me and knowing like just knowing that it's gonna it's absolutely gonna happen and I get to just keep showing up and sharing my gifts and so when I take that moment in the day and it doesn't take long sometimes it might be 10 minutes sometimes it might be half an hour it doesn't have to be it has to be rigid it has to be that it's about what can you connect to that frequency can you connect to that gratitude can you open your heart chakra can you connect to love can you connect to the belief and the trust that you are aligning with that version of you who already has what she wants and how you know you do that is either you might have a tear of gratitude or it might be a smile or it might be a relief and as soon as I get that feeling and I know I'm connected to the divine and I know that my spirit team is with me and to support me it's like I'm ready for the day. And I sometimes I pull an oracle card and get the wisdom from an oracle card, like a message. Um, I do my gratitudes. I always, I have my little, uh, this new journal and I write my gratitudes and what I would love to happen today and how I can, what I can do to make a difference in someone's life. So it gives me these prompts. So that way I'm just like 
on on par um and and taking my morning routine with me throughout the day so and this is one thing that i have found and i witness in myself and i witnessed as a pattern in a lot of people when it comes to manifestation is they think that manifestation is something we sit down and we do and then we just go through go about our day the same way and it's not it's about being the embodiment so the morning routine is like your dedicated devotional practice to sit down and to connect with your higher self and to your mission and to your divine and to see what's coming up and like what can i release here and to take that about your day so you don't just sit there and feel that good emotions it's like how can i take those beliefs with me through the day because you might get caught in a traffic jam you might want to ultimately go on road rage someone might do something to trigger you a bill might come in that you weren't anticipating and it's like how are you going to respond to that are you going to go back to the old self and retaliate and react um or are you going to bring the frequency of the version that you're being in the morning and respond in that way and that's how you will have those quantum shifts as well because you're you're changing your mindset on this is something i have to do like a morning routine and it's something that i'm being and this is my devotional practice that i get to commit to um and you're not always going to be perfect we're human and this is the beauty of it this is how we also get to see how do we know that we're happy if we haven't experienced sadness you know how do we absolutely yeah i mean and on that the 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 issues with routines i was doing that i was tracking my sleep and because i became obsessed with sleep and getting you know because I, I i don't think i slept well for many many years and I was focused on sleep at a high level after reading the books on sleep and the brain and so on. And I started to become obsessed, you know, tracking it. And I found that I was killing myself doing it. And um, so I stopped putting my watch on during the night and I stopped tracking it. And I was able probably to relax a lot more mm -hmm. when it came to sleep. So that was, that's my personal experience with what you said about routines. And yeah, you're right. I've, I've probably only got to that point recently where I start talking about, uh, my morning routines and I was like I have to do it I have to do it and I'd, if I didn't do it I felt shit about myself for the day and I was like no I shouldn't be doing this there's a reason so my routine is not what it used to be even though I felt amazing when I did do it now it's just about realigning myself and going right well if I don't do it if I didn't do it today it's okay let's just uh, let's focus on trying to do it in the morning but if it comes in the present where I don't know I just wanted to lie there for an extra 20 minutes and be still then don't get so hard on yourself when you are running a little bit late and you can't squeeze it in. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm only reaching that point recently and I've not, but I just loved how I felt by doing, I mean, I do cold exposure every morning. I've not really let that slip, but I used to get up and I couldn't do a press up and I couldn't do sit ups because of the ankylizing spondylitis in my lower back. And um, I struggle, but I built it. I changed my food. And before you know it, I was doing not far off a thousand sit ups a morning. I was doing, I was able to do 200 press ups. We're not even worrying about it. And I couldn't do 10 six months prior to that, mm. you know? And um, I felt like I just got that young mindset back again. It's not young, but clear mindset. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to do those things. And I f just felt what the word that you love power. Mm -hmm. I felt powerful all day. And I don't mean in terms of everybody else, just powerful within myself, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And it was amazing. Um, what was your, you, you said it before, uh, so I'm going to ask you directly, what is what was your message then for today? Because we're in the present Monday morning. Uh, what was your message for today? Did you see anything of how you wanted it to go today, maybe? Mm -hmm. You know, and this is a clear scenario of um, when, when life happens. I had the most wild, fun weekend and then, um, and had spent some time with my man that I'm currently seeing this morning. And, um, and time just time got away and it's like oh but my routine's coming and and so I didn't make that mean anything about myself it's like well I can connect in right before I can connect back in and take a moment and know I'm on purpose and I know I'm on on par and and it's something that I could do on the, on the go and so even though I didn't get to sit in my normal practice that I would every morning I still connect into that frequency of I'm here to be in my power and to be authentic and to show up and um had such an amazing conversation about this last night with with him um and that 
really brought in really bringing that frequency in today and yeah and then later tonight I will go back and I'll connect in with my spirit guides because that's a big thing like I'll always connect to my spirit guides and so this morning I didn't have a chance to connect to the spirit guides um but I still connect into that frequency of um showing up in my power in my authentic self trusting in myself and um and that's a what I think too you know when I say a lot of people put their worth in what they're doing they're doing their achievements and a lot of people look at and what you said I didn't do my morning routine now I'm going to make this mean this about me or or whatnot but it's like it's we take away the the um the seriousness of it that if I don't do this then I'm not going to achieve that and these are all tools remember and, and who we're being is what shifts is what gets us to where we want and these tools allow us to connect into that stillness and so when you're when you're doing it consistently you can you can tap in quite quickly and where you're on the go but I do love doing it in the morning because you are in that that frequency state um your brain waves and stuff um where you're most susceptible to new suggestions and and magic so I always absolutely it's like yeah this is my practice but if it doesn't happen it's not going to mean anything about me I'm still on my path I'm still going to have all of my desires I'm still going to make my impact and I'll connect with my spirit team tonight I'll connect with them later I've actually got a healing that I'm going to after so I've got to call on them anyways um so I know that's who I am I'm going to connect to them every single day just might not be in the morning sometimes Oh, sure. So for those that don't know, then um, you said it before a statement. I'm not too. I want to learn as well. Yeah, I think you said high divine or, or that the the divine. What does that mean? Okay. So what this means is join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.